The overall process of winemaking might appear relatively straightforward, but consider the transformation of grape constituents during winemaking. Apart from the obvious conversion of sugar into alcohol and carbon dioxide, many other interesting biological and chemical processes take place, and they are very important to the quality of wine, having a direct impact on wine sensory profiles. The evolution of, from grapes to wine relies on the chemical composition, the many chemical compounds of red and white grapes used for winemaking, and factors such as yeast strain, fermentation conditions, and maturation techniques. Some transformations are specific to the production of either red or white wine styles, and each of the winemaking steps we've already described needs to be managed appropriately, usually to promote, but sometimes to avoid, outcomes related to the colours, aromas, flavours and sensations in the mouth that contribute to our enjoyment of wine. Understanding the chemistry and underlying reactions involves a whole undergraduate course, so in this video we'll cover just some of the important chemical processes. Other aspects will appear in subsequent videos. The colour of red wine arises due to compounds produced in red grape skins called anthocyanins. These also provide the colour to other fruits and flowers. That's why red wine making is conducted with grape solids to extract anthocyanins along with other important phenolic components such as tannins which contribute to mouthfeel. Anthocyanins can impart colours ranging from bright red, deep purple and pink through to blue, yellow and even colourless. A range of factors are responsible for the expression of the different colours of anthocyanins including pH, the presence of sulphur dioxide and formation of new pigments where anthocyanins react with grape components and yeast metabolites. In fact this transformation of grape anthocyanins is extremely important to wine colour as it provides numerous new compounds with better long-term colour stability. These derived compounds help explain the transformation in wine colour from the deep red purple hues of a newly produced wine to the brick red hues associated with an aged red wine at which time the original grape anthocyanins are no longer present, yet older wines still are coloured. The acidity of wine helps with these reactions, but oxygen in the atmosphere also plays an important role in the formation of new wine pigments. This is different to white wine where oxygen is usually detrimental. Small amounts of oxygen are required during the reactions of anthocyanins with other wine components to regenerate the coloured forms of the new pigments. Winemakers incorporate oxygen as a result of wine transfers during winemaking, for example pumping over during fermentation, while maturation in porous vessels such as oak barrels also provides for a slow transfer of oxygen. A process known as microoxygenation MOX, was developed to imitate the slow natural oxygenation which is so beneficial to wine colour, but MOX does this in an accelerated and measured way. This offers alternatives to the usual process of oak maturation in cellars filled with barrels, while still improving wine sensory properties, particularly colour stability. Other oak products apart from oak barrels can then be used to confer some of the desirable impacts of oak to the wine. The sensations elicited in mouth when drinking wine result from the perception of various compounds in the wine. Components such as ethanol, acids, sugar, tannins and polysaccharides affect the viscosity and astringency of wines and play a major role in wine quality. Astringency is of particular relevance to red wine while body is more often related to white wine and different wine components can be associated with the perceptions of mouthfeel and body in the respective wine styles. Red wines contain an abundance of polyphenolic compounds as a result of the grapes and winemaking techniques used. In particular, grape and wine tannins are responsible for the astringent mouthfeel of red wines which encompasses sensations of drying, puckering, roughness and mouth coating. These astringent subqualities need to be balanced with other wine components such as acidity, sweetness, polysaccharides and ethanol content. Winemakers have a certain level of control over some of these factors during winemaking and ageing. For example, fruit ripeness, choice of yeast, maceration regime, mocks, lees contact and fining to get the balance right for the production of a quality product. The concept of wine body relates to descriptions of fullness, palate weight, viscosity, thickness and thinness, or how a wine flows in the mouth. Just as astringency is an essential quality parameter for red wine, the in-mouth perception of body is an important characteristic for white wine. Compounds such as ethanol and glycerol have typically been studied for their effects on white wine body. Wine polysaccharides may also play a role in mouthfeel by increasing body or reducing astringency by complexing with tannins. 
Yeast lees contain polysaccharides and ageing on lees is an important winemaking tool because of its ability to improve wine mouthfeel and other sensory properties. Consumers want to buy clear, sediment free wine. Filtration is used to remove particles and make wine clear in the bottle, but production of quality wine requires that the wines are stable in the bottle so the appearance of precipitates or any form of haziness doesn't appear under the usual wine storage conditions. The main exception relates to bottle aged red wines where some precipitation of pigmented material is to be expected. Don't be mistaken though, there may be nothing at all wrong with a cloudy wine or some sediment or crystals in the bottle and some winemakers successfully market wines just like this, but this is not the main approach. Wines will naturally become stable over a long period of storage time, but winemakers often want that stability in a faster time frame. Practices have been developed to enhance the rate of stabilisation so wines can reach the market in a timely fashion. Instabilities in wine arise from a range of factors including those relating to oxidation, microbial effects, metal ions, grape proteins, tartrate salts, phenolics and pigments. Two of the main stabilisation treatments employed during wine production relate to proteins and tartrates, that is heat and cold stability, to prevent cloudiness or crystal formation. Another process known as wine fining is also carried out to help stabilise wine and improve the sensory characters. Certain grape derived proteins can become heat unstable and will cause a haze in white wine if not removed. Most often, winemakers will use bentonite fining to eliminate these proteins. Bentonite can also be used as a settling aid to improve clarification, and wine is racked off the sediment and clarified further by filtration. Tartrate instability results from the supersaturation of wine by potassium bitartrate or calcium tartrate salts. Their solubility depends on a number of factors, but in general these salts, which may be close to saturation in grape juice, become less soluble as alcohol content increases or temperature decreases, leading to slow precipitation of tartrate crystals. This is especially relevant to white wine production, where the crystals are clearly visible in the bottle heard of wine diamonds, and they may be mistaken for foreign objects such as glass, and also because white wines are generally chilled before being consumed. Some tartrate will precipitate during the winemaking process, but precipitation can be slow and unpredictable. Techniques for tartrate stabilisation typically focus on removal of bitartrate through the use of low temperature storage, cold stabilisation at zero degrees centigrade for weeks or months, or seeding with finely ground bitartrate crystals, cream of tartar like that used in cooking in combination with low temperature storage to speed up the process, so it takes a matter of hours. Precipitated tartrate is removed through racking and filtration or centrifugation of the wine while it is still cold, and it can be recovered, ground up and reused. Fining agents are wine making additives which are typically used to promote stabilisation by removing colloidal matter, but they can also moderate aspects related to astringency, bitterness and colour associated with phenolic material, and undesirable aromas from volatile components. Fining agents are usually animal derived, with typical examples being gelatin, egg white, eyes and glass, that is fish collagen, and milk products, skim milk powder or casein, but may also include silicosol, PVPP, activated charcoal and bentonite. Many of these agents are employed to improve sensory characteristics, such as mouthfeel, taste and colour, as well as clarity, whereas bentonite is used for clarification. Fining agents are typically added as a solution or slurry and thoroughly mixed into the liquid being treated. They are removed by racking and centrifuging or filtering once they've achieved their effect. Overall, the choice of fining agent depends on the wine style and the outcome required, such as providing a clarifying effect while minimising lees production, lowering astringency in red wine, lightening colour and preventing browning in white wine. Because some of these fining agents are potential allergens, they are listed on the bottle label to alert people that traces may remain.